This Liberty Sports Update is brought to you by Beacon Credit Union. As we welcome in a new year, we also welcome in Director of Athletics Ian McCall to look back at the year that was 2020. And uh, Ian, before we get into that, first of all, Happy New Year. How were the holidays for you? Yeah, thanks, Nick. We had a great time. Uh, really enjoyed some uh, quality family time and uh, uh, always a great time to uh, reflect back on 2020 and encounter blessings. Yeah, you know what? A lot of folks were ready for 2020 to get on out of here. But as we look back at it, though, there were a lot, there was a lot of accomplishments for Liberty Athletics to celebrate. And uh, first of all, let's start student athletes, student first, uh, fall grade point average cumulative of 3.29. That's got to make you smile. Yeah, Nick, that, that's really extraordinary. Given all the, the challenges and the disruptions that student athletes face this, uh, this fall to have a record uh, grade point average really speaks to uh, the quality work they put in and certainly the academic commitment of our coaches and our faculty and uh, the great work that uh, Christy Bites and the Academic Affairs for Athletic staff does. Yeah, you mentioned it, despite all the challenges of virtual learning, bubbles, and, and those types of things, but uh, still able to put up those kinds of numbers. Uh, just awesome. You know, despite COVID, as I said, this was a, a very successful year in 2020 for Liberty Athletics. Every team that competed this year won a championship. You know, you look at football, they won the Cure Bowl, men's and women's basketball, whether it's a regular season title or co-champions of the tournament, swimming with the CCSA title. I mean, that's pretty rare, isn't it? It really is. That's a remarkable accomplishment. Again, really speaks to the quality of, uh, of our programs uh, across the board. Uh, we have great coaches, great staff. Uh, our student athletes are performing at a very high level. And, uh, you know, Liberty uh, Athletics is on the rise, and uh, that's a great, uh, a great example. You know, and, and folks are really starting to take notice, too. That's another thing that I've noticed is when you look back at the, the Cure Bowl, more than 10 million Twitter impressions during the Cure Bowl, so social media very active. And then you look at the television ratings as well, nationally televised ESPN primetime. You draw 2.2, excuse me, 2.62 million viewers and a 1.4 rating. That was the highest rating for a bowl game involving G5 teams since 2017. What does that do for the program? Well, it just does so much for the whole university. I mean, just think about the impact on admissions and uh, development, uh, certainly uh, uh, a great opportunity for us to, to uh, engage our alumni. So it, it does great things for the institution, certainly more programmatically from an athletic standpoint. This uh, really helps in recruiting and uh, just really makes a, a great uh, a great brand building experience for, for us. So uh, we were thrilled uh, with the exposure. And uh, again, it really validates the decision that was made to move up to FBS football and compete at the highest level. You know, as we talk about football, you know, I think one thing that you and I would agree on as well is that we, we believe in and serve a mighty God, but there had to be some divine intervention or some divine favor for us to be able to get almost an entire football season in, minus one game that wound up being played anyway in the bowl game. I mean, what does that say for the, the support staff? And just, I mean, how surprised are you that we were able to get as much in as we did? Yeah, I mean, this has been the most challenging year uh, we've ever faced and uh, certainly very blessed and, and highly favored to be able to get through the year we, the way we did. But it's a credit to our staff and uh, every area in our department was stressed and uh, uh, certainly sports medicine and academic affairs for athletics and nutrition and you can go right across the board some of them face more stress than others but uh, it really required everyone's effort to rally behind our teams put our student athletes and our teams first and uh, find a way to get them get uh, certainly football on the field and and now basketball and and we're looking forward to getting our spring sports out there very soon yeah, spring sports getting ready to get started. We'll talk about that here in just a minute. But a couple of other things wanted to ask you about related to football. How was your bowl experience in Orlando and how different was it given just the shorter stay? Yeah, very unique. I think I've been to eight different bowl games and uh, this was just uh, this was a lot more like a road game. And uh, we didn't have the four or five days and and all the social activities and hospitality. It was just more like a road trip. You fly in, you stay at the hotel, you have your meetings and you play the game. But uh, the Cure Bowl staff did a, a fantastic job. It was great that we had at least some of our fans able to, uh, to make it to Orlando to support the team. And, and uh, obviously any time when your bowl experience ends with a victory, it's a, it's a good bowl experience. Lots of chatter about the Flames football program, but also the Flames head coach, Hugh Freeze. And when you're able to sign him to a long-term extension and hear him say the things that he said about the program and how nothing else has made his heart flutter, I think is how he said it. Uh, when you hear him talk about the program and his overall experience at Liberty, uh, how pleased does that make you as an AD right now? Well, we're so grateful for, for what he's done with this program over the last two years and continues to do as, as we move into the future. But you know, he's such a great leader, uh, obviously a brilliant football coach, and uh, just has a tremendous uh, 
um, Christ Center commitment to you know building champions for Christ, and that's what it's about here at Liberty. And uh, he does a wonderful job in terms of uh, leading his program, guiding his student athletes, and uh, we're really grateful for all that he does on the field and off the field with uh, with Liberty football. It's really hard to imagine that another man could have done what he's done in this position with this program in this amount of time, isn't it? Yeah, it's really remarkable. I mean, we're so far ahead of schedule. You know, if, if someone has said, you know, where would you hope to be two years into the FBS journey? Um, you know, you'd, you'd hope to maybe get to a bowl game by year two, but, but that would be a, a reach. But to have a team that's right now in the, you know, going to end up in the top 20 in the polls, a 10 and one season and, you know, all the, uh, the accomplishments, it's, uh, it's remarkable. And uh, get, getting great credit to Coach Freeze, his staff, and, and uh, the support staff around the football program. Well, last thing here from me, uh, when you look at spring sports, many of them have their schedules finalized. They're getting ready to get going here. What do we know about some of the sports that, that haven't quite done that yet? And, and when can we expect to hear some news there? Yeah, I think the ASUN's finalizing all the, uh, all the schedules at this point in time. Some are out, some are not, but uh, we're very close to doing that. And as we welcome our student athletes back here for the, uh, the spring semester, we'll uh, be able to roll our schedules out and, and get ready for competition. And it'll be a busy spring. We'll have uh, 19 of our 20 teams will be competing and uh, we're packing almost a year's worth of competition into one semester. So again, that will stress our staff and our facilities and our COVID testing uh, uh, at a high level. But uh, I think everyone's up to the challenge and we're looking forward to it. Ian, as always, appreciate your time. Happy New Year. Thanks, Nick. Appreciate it.